Now it's time for the Mackinac Policy Conference to officially begin. We're going to take you now to the theater where Detroit Regional Chamber President and CEO Sandy Perua is on stage with his opening remarks. Examined us and have tried to copy this unique event without success. And this is a unique environment because we have a unique setting. We're on an island. We're at the beautiful and historic Grand Hotel. You're away from your office, from your office phone, your conference room, and you're in a different state of mind here. And it's this concentration of leaders and in this unique setting that makes this conference work. And I appreciate all of you taking time out of your busy schedules to be part of this unique event. Now, of course, an event like this or any event is not possible without our fantastic sponsors. And this year, we have 60 sponsors. And each one of our sponsors make this event possible. And we're appreciative of all 60 of them. But once again, we are pleased that Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan is back with us as our premier diamond level sponsor. And Blue Cross does so much for us in our community, does so much for the Detroit Regional Chamber. And I want to thank Dan Lepp and the Blue Cross team for everything that they do. So thank you very much, Dan. We have a bunch of uh, platinum sponsors as well to thank. Consumers Energy, Dow, DTE Energy, Huntington Bank, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, the Michigan Health and Hospital Association, PNC Bank, the Quicken Loan family of companies, UPS, and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Please thank these sponsors and all 60 of our sponsors for making this possible. To make the most of your conference experience, I really encourage you to download the conference app. The app is where you're going to find the schedule, where you're going to find speaker bios, and you can find out who else is attending with you, and you can direct message those conference attendees right from that app. And frankly, it's going to help you find your next cocktail this afternoon. Now, if you need help, because I know some of you are no longer millennials, if you need help downloading the app, working your new iPhone 22, or whatever you might be carrying in your pocket, please visit the parlor. We actually have a help desk that'll help you set that up. Now, once you download the app, make sure you turn on push notifications. Push notifications are going to alert you to any schedule changes. It's going to alert you to any venue changes. And it's even going to help you find free ice cream. So turn on notifications. Now, we're thrilled to have 17 of Michigan's top business, philanthropic, and political leaders on this island. But this conversation is not just for the 1,700 of you who have made the trek up here to the island. It's just a conversation for the entire state. That's why we have 160 this year, 160 working media from the national state and local levels covering every inch of this conference. But you all have a role as well. And that is to use your social media accounts. Use your hashtag MPC18. Use your you know, Twittergram, your Facebook, your Snapchat, or whatever it is that you use. And talk about what you're experiencing here on the conference. Take pictures, share a thought, challenge other people, because we want this to be a conversation for the entire state. Now, if you've been attending this conference for a while, you know that we have worked really hard over the last several years to kind of demystify this conference and kind of take the veil off of it and allow the rest of the state to understand what happens here and also to participate in the conversation. A large part of this is our, thanks to our long-term partnership with Detroit Public Television. DPTV broadcasts our session live and they, are, um, uh, and they make their video feed available to every media outlet in the nation completely free of charge. And that means roughly 60,000 unique viewers all across this country are watching some portion of this conference. And of course, DPTV's Christy McDonald is in, in, in the parlor interviewing our elected officials, our attendees, and our national speakers that are coming to this conference. And in addition, 
The conference, everything uh, on this stage and on the other rooms is live streamed through the DPTV uh, site and the Detroit Regional Chamber site and many other media sites so people can, no matter where you are in the country, pop in and listen to some of the same conversations that you all get to enjoy. I have a big thank you to make. So year after year, the Skidmore Studios has been responsible for producing our very unique and our very striking Detroiter cover for the Mackinac Policy Conference. And there's a copy of this issue at your chair. This year is really focused on capturing in a unique and artistic way the challenge that our nation faces when it comes to public discourse and the level of trust. Now Skidmore has been our design partner for several years now, and they've produced numerous striking and memorable Detroit covers for us. Sadly, earlier this year, we lost Tim Smith, the heart and soul of the historic Skidmore Studios. Tim was a friend, he was a board member, and a strong advocate for Detroit's youth. But we're hugely grateful for the team at Skidmore for carrying on this Mackinac policy tradition of producing our cover for the Detroiter. So the cover's focused on trust. Why are we focused on trust? Why is that one of the pillars of this year's conference? Well, just look at the news. Look at social media. There's no secret that the level of trust in our society is at a dangerously low level. And we believe that trust is absolutely a necessary element to the functioning of our democracy and our civil society in the United States. And it doesn't feel like it's a temporary thing, right? It doesn't feel like it's a, you know, a turn in the White House by Anthony Scaramucci. It seems a little bit more tangible and durable than that. The annual trust barometer by Edelman puts hard data that, uh, to what we all feel in our bones and what we witness every day on the news and in our conversations. The US fell an unprecedented nine points in the Global Trust Index. This is the largest drop Edelman has ever recorded in this survey's history for any nation. The level of societal trust in the United States is actually lower than it is in China. And in fact, the US enjoys public trust levels lower than countries like India and Colombia. The citizens of Russia and China, two very non-democratic nations, have more faith in their governments to provide a better future for their citizens than the citizens of our nation do in their own government. And globally, the number one most distrusted institution is our fourth estate, the media. That's scary in and of itself. Now for this audience, an audience primarily composed of business leaders, there's good news, but with good news comes a lot of responsibility. The most trusted institution right now in the United States is business. And 64% in the Edelman Trust Barometer expect and want business leaders to lead positive societal change in this country. It's a lot of responsibility. Now, we're gonna take this conversation around trust and this whole ethos that we have built here at this conference about disagreeing without being disagreeable to our new morning format on Friday mornings called Morning View, Mackinac Uncensored. We know that Friday morning, you all are anxious to get off the island and you don't wanna come in here. So we're gonna bring the program to you. So as you're getting ready, as you have your luggage, get a cup of coffee, get a croissant, and go out to the parlor where we're actually gonna have 15 minute televised debates hosted by some of the same great journalists that are gonna be on this stage or that you see in Media Row, talking about pithy issues of the day in very short little segments. So come and go as you please, have your coffee. It'll be a great way to, you know, uh, to end the conference and uh, we promise you you're gonna have a really great time Friday morning. That starts at 8.30 on Friday. 
Now, while this conference is obviously designed for C-suite leaders, uh, we have had a program over the last handful of years to make sure that we're including the next generation of Michigan leaders in this event. Thanks to our partnership with Harvard Business School and Bank of America, we are pleased to welcome 30 future leaders to this conference. And this group of 30 not only get to attend the conference, but they have special sessions with top leaders, such as Mike Duggan and other corporate leaders for one-on-one -on -one and small group conversations to enhance their experience. And 10 of these participants will be traveling to Harvard later on this month to participate in the prestigious Harvard Business School Young American Leaders Program. This, pro this program, this conference, has been a great networking event, but we're proud that it's been so much more than networking. This is a place where positive change has been made. While this is not a policy-making body, it is a policy conference, we do bring together the top decision makers, both from the private and public sector, and we do have a point of view on key issues impacting our state. Over the past few years, the number of big issues confronting Michigan that have been either solved or accelerated at this conference have been pretty impressive. The new international trade crossing, making biz, uh, Michigan more business friendly with the elimination of the Michigan business tax, supporting economic development legislation like the My Thrive legislation and the Good Jobs for Michigan package, and of course, the grand bargain that helped save Detroit and accelerated its course through municipal bankruptcy. And we haven't shied away, certainly, from difficult issues. We've discussed the Flint water crisis, and with the help of Mayor Weaver and the Mott Foundation, this audience raised a quarter million dollars to help the people of Flint. In partnership with the Detroit Historical Society, we helped launch the Detroit 67 Project on this stage, and we did not shy away from examining the traumatic events that happened in Detroit in 1967. And last year, our mayor, Mike Duggan, delivered the most viewed online, most online viewed speech in Mackinac Policy Conference history with his powerhouse presentation on Detroit's racial history. People are still watching that speech today and talking about it today. Now, of course, we have a lot of work ahead of us. We need a public infrastructure in this state that is ready for the 21st century economy. Regional transit has been on our agenda since the 1990s, and it's still on it today. We need much better educational outcomes at all levels, and we need to create an ethos of lifelong adult education in this state. And we need to win the fight for the next generation of mobility and need to be overly competitive in that space in the state of Michigan. All of these issues are going to be on our agenda, this conference, and going forward. Now, this conference has been a huge success, thanks to all of you your participation, your engagement. Thank you for all that you have done. And I want to let you know that your support for this statewide event has a direct impact back home in the Detroit region. And it helps us actually move the economic needle back home. Forward Detroit is our regional comprehensive suite of economic development programs sponsored by the Detroit Regional Chambers Foundation. These economic development programs include Michado, which is our mobility initiative, Destination Detroit, which is about business attraction, the Detroit Promise, which is a scholarship program for Detroit students, and Health Forward, which is a healthcare initiative. All of these Forward Detroit programs work in unison to move metrics around five key pillars, around community, around people, around global connectivity, around talent, around next generation mobility. And each one of these pillars has its own set of goals and metrics that we hold ourselves accountable to. So while many of you are a long way from home, I want you to know that your support for this event on this island actually has a tangible benefit back home. And for those of you who aren't from this area or aren't from the Detroit area, 
We just want to thank you for your support for this conference and for what we're able to do with this back in Michigan's signature city, Detroit. So thank you all for being here. We are thrilled to have you. We have a fabulous lineup for you today. Thanks for joining us. Please welcome the U.S. automotive leader and Detroit managing partner for PwC and share of the 2018 Mackinac Policy Conference, Ray Talang. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 38th Mackinac Policy Conference. It's been my honor and pleasure to work with so many talented people to make this conference come to life. Not the least of which is the statewide uh, CEO committee uh, that helped define the pillars, helped uh, refine the conversations here. Secondly is the program committee, which helped make the, the agenda come to life as well. Not the least of which is the chamber staff. Huge thank you to Wendy Nodge, Tammy Karnreich, and um, Megan Spanitz for all the hard work. They have a well-oiled machine. Let's give them a round of applause. I'm excited about this year's conference. As typical, the agenda is jam-packed, so let's get at it. Each year, the conference is built around three pillars. Each pillar is selected to focus the discussions that happen up on this stage. Our first pillar is Michigan Prepared. We'll focus on Michigan's competitiveness for major business investment and be a place where people want to come live, work, and play. Issues under this pillar will include what must be done in the near term and long term to stimulate investment and job creation, conversations led by foundation and business leaders. In addition, we'll also have discussions led by Detroit Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Duggan, excuse me, uh, former Education Secretary John King, uh, focused on how we can better prepare our kids to be career and or college ready. And of course, Extremely important as well is the, the, the panel discussion that we're going to have around um, women in leadership. And of course, we'll get to hear from our mayor, uh, from our governor, Rick Snyder, in his last address as governor to the Mackinac Policy Conference. Our second pillar is the mobility disruption, which will focus on what it will take to strengthen Michigan's position as a leader in next generation mobility. In past conferences, we've talked about the technology, we've talked about infrastructure, and we've talked about talent. This conversation will be focused around regulatory and policy challenges that we must do to confront um, the issues about being at the forefront while balancing the need to be, keep our people safe. To help us with that discussion will be experts such as Don Butler of Ford Mobility, John McElroy of AutoLine, Carla Bello of the Center for Automotive Research, and Casey Crane of Automotive News. And finally, our third pillar. Building on last year's theme of civility, this year we wanted to explore what could be done to restore trust with those critical American institutions such as government, media, and business. As Sandy indicated, trust is a critical element to the successful functioning of our democratic society. And I think we can all agree that, that trust has never been more challenged in our lifetimes. At PwC, we've been talking about trust for a number of years. In fact, it's our, our, our purpose statement is to build trust in society and solve important problems. So therefore, I wanted to build, bring that topic to the conference this year. To us, that means using our talents and experiences to address the most challenging of issues for our clients and communities, but doing it by truly listening to one another and engaging in constructive dialogue. To help us navigate this, construct, this critical topic, we will hear from former Speaker of the House John Boehner, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the Wall Street Journal Peggy Noonan, Paula Kerger, President and CEO of PBS, the most trusted media institution in America, and national political experts Patty Solis Doyle, Harold Ford Jr., and J.C. Watts. These are just a few of our impressive lineup of speakers this year. A complete list is in the conference app that Sandy referred to earlier. I'm sure you all have downloaded it by now. And of course, 2018 is also an election year. 
and the conversations that take place as part of the Michigan, Is Michigan Prepared Pillar will lay the groundwork for policies and issues that our candidates will undoubtedly discuss not only here on the stage as, as part of the debate later on, but also form the basis for conversations that will continue throughout the summer and into the fall. With that in mind, we are very proud to be hosting the first statewide debate of the top six gubernatorial candidates Thursday at 5.30 on this stage. The conference will welcome Democratic candidates Abdul El Sayed, Shri Tanadar, and Gretchen Whitmer. We'll also welcome the Republican candidates of Brian Kelly, Patrick Kolbeck, and Bill Schuette. The debate format is designed to drive constructive dialogue and should, and should prevent uh, specific candidates from playing solely to their base. To moderate this landmark event, we are pleased to announce that we've got the My Week team of Nolan Finley, Stephen Henderson, and Christy McDonald. The debate will be streamlined, streamed live across the state thanks to our ongoing partnership with Detroit Public Television and will be rebroadcast Thursday evening at 8 p.m. If you want to attend this debate, please know a separate ticket is required and they'll be available in the gallery. Now, in its 38th year, the conference is truly the place where conversations among Michigan's most influential audience occur. Take a look around you. When we say influential, this is what we mean. 60% of you, of the attendees, hold a C-suite or executive title. These are the industry leaders that are changing Michigan's trajectory. 44% hail from corporations, and 21% are government leaders. This is also where government and business come together to have those conversations about what's most important to our people. In addition, there are 150 working media that will undoubtedly offer national coverage for this great conference. We do believe that it provides a unique venue to get things done and fosters conversations that would not have happened otherwise. Our state has come a long way in a, very rel in a relatively short period of time, but I think we would all agree that we still have some work to, co to, to, to cover. As leaders, we need to commit to continue the discussion that starts here over the next two, two days when we leave here on Friday. This being an election year, it's those solution-oriented discussions that will help move the state forward. So to get us started, as he has the last seven years, is our Governor Rick Snyder. Governor Snyder's been an integral par part of this conference since the day he entered office. He's fond of saying, let's not just have a nice meeting. He's been masterful in using the conference to get things done, such as the Grand Bargain, the Gordie Howe International Bridge, and to road funding. It's not just a nice meeting for Governor Snyder, but it's a place to advance Michigan's relentlessly positive agenda. We all know, we all know Governor Snyder is one tough nerd. I am extremely proud to also call him an alumnus of PwC and a friend. To share thoughts on important conversations this week, please welcome my PwC partner, the governor of the great state of Michigan, Rick Snyder. Mike up still. We have a bit of a surprise for you. Okay. Um, we're going to take it out of sequence okay. a little bit, but I'll let Sandy take the mic here for a minute. So, Governor, we don't want to step on, uh, step on your time, but this is your last appearance at the Mackinac Policy Conference as governor of the state of Michigan. Hopefully it's not your last appearance at the conference. And when we think of Governor Schneider, what three words do we think of? Very loud. <laughs> <laughs> you have marketed that incredibly well. <laughs> Relentless positive action. This is the RPA governor. So what do you get the governor who has given this conference in this state so much? Well, there are ethics rules, so we couldn't buy him anything. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, for 2018, Ray, if I could get your help here. Yep. We are rebranding this conference in honor of our governor, the RPA governor, the Relentless Positive Action Conference. Well, thank you. Go ahead. 
So what we're going to do is, after the governor is done with his remarks, we are going to move this very large sign out to the parlor, and you all can sign on to being relentlessly positive after this governor leaves office. Governor, thank you so much. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. That's great. Thank you. Well, that was awesome. That, is, that was a real surprise. You can see I wasn't prepared for that, and I appreciate that, because RPA is what it's all about. So hopefully we can have an RPA conference, because we should. We should be proud of what's going on in the state. And it's great to have a chance to share a few minutes with you now, and I look forward to having you get stuck listening to me again tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to stick to the pillars today. Uh, talk a little bit about them and share a few thoughts with you, because I think it is critically important. And I want to thank Sandy and Ray and all the conference people that have done this, pulled this together with themes. It's happened each and every year. And we've gotten a lot done. You should be proud of what you accomplished here. This is, just isn't about coming to talk. It is about action. And action has been an outcome of this that is making a material difference in Michigan and our future. So if you step back and look at the three pillars, is Michigan prepared? Uh, to put it in context, yes and no. The most important thing is, is we're asking the question. Um, my greatest concern when I look at where Michigan's at is that we start getting complacent and content again. We start saying, we get that attitude to say, things are good enough, or we are prepared. In today's world, you should never be able to say you're fully prepared. The world's changing too fast. It's more important you're having the dialogue about what you've learned, what you've done, and how you're preparing for what's coming next, isn't it? And that's the discussion we need to be having. We've come a tremendous difference, distance in terms of what we have accomplished. We are far better off than we were eight years ago in terms of everything from our finances to the programs to the fact we have jobs now. But we have some big issues. And I'll give you a couple of illustrations. Back in 2010, the issue is, is, is there a job? Now the question is, is how do you get the skills to take that well-paying job that's out there today? The questions evolve. As you show success, as you make things happen, there's going to be a new set of questions being created. And that's what I mean about always looking towards the future. Once you answer that past question, once you solve that one issue, there's something else. And to give you a point on that is that I'm very proud of what we've done in the last few years on talent in our state. Uh, we've done some tremendously exciting things with career tech education, emphasizing the professional trades, the skilled trades. Getting that reestablished is a great track. We still have too many openings, but we've made a lot of progress. Engineering talent is up dramatically in our state. We've got a whole thing for industrial designers now, a whole association. We lead the nation in having more industrial designers than any other state. I bet many of you didn't even know that. These things are all going on, but as I look to the future, and we did some work recently, you've heard about the Marshall Plan for Talent, it was time to look out farther in the future. And when we did that analysis, and believe me, I actually, I am a proud nerd, I sat down with the economists themselves and hashed through that more than two or three times about how we're doing our economic forecast. It showed in about 20-some job categories, we were gonna have over 800,000 openings in the state of Michigan alone by 2024. Now, it's just not a Michigan issue. This is a huge national problem. Think about that, though. 800,000 openings in only 20-some different categories. And if you looked at our capacity today, if we filled every single K-12, community college, higher ed, every program we did, and we had full classrooms of all those people in those, all of those 20 categories, we wouldn't come close to filling those 800,000 jobs. So the Marshall Plan concept was is it's not good enough. For all the great stuff we have going, we need to add, I call it a capstone catalyst to lay on top, to be an accelerator, to say, how do you step on the gas even more and how do you go further and faster? And that's what the Marshall Plan's about. So one thing you may be recruited here this week is to sign up to be a champion for the Marshall Plan. I encourage you to sign up. We need you on board. We need to find out how to do more, many, many, many more competency-based certificate programs. We need to find scholarships for disadvantaged people that don't have the resources to go get that education. We need to create a lot of exciting things that are part of the Marshall Plan. So there's an illustration of what we need to prepare for for the future. Another one when you ask are we prepared is we're going to talk about this this afternoon, the Sioux Locks. 
we've got 1,000 foot lock. If that lock gets taken out of commission, literally we could have 11 million unemployed in our country within a matter of months. We wouldn't be able to produce an auto. They approved doing a second lock back in the 80s. Shouldn't we get our act together and when you ask, are we prepared? We're not. Let's solve that. Let's not wait anymore. Let's not wait another 30 years to talk about it. We can do something here at this conference to help send the message to Washington. It's time to act now. So those are the kind of questions that are out there that we always need to be asking. And it ties right into the second pillar, mobility disruption. We should be proud. We are the world's leader in mobility, right here in Michigan. I was really proud, did a trade mission to Europe just a few weeks ago, and we signed agreements to do mobility with not only the state of Styria and Austria, but we signed national agreements with the countries of the UK and the Netherlands. Think about that. There are two of the largest countries, most powerful economies out there that want to sign agreements with the state of Michigan on this topic. Isn't that cool? So we have that position, but I can tell you, it's not all easy things to do. This is gonna be a huge societal transformation for the entire world. And we need to be the responsible voice and leaders of that effort. And we need to do that by not trying to be better than anyone else, but by being the best partner with the rest of the world, embracing the rest of the world. It's not a versus, it's about us coming together and being that catalyst again, to leverage our strengths and our abilities to work well with others. And as that comes, one of the things we just did this morning, I did a press conference with some great people this morning where we announced the $8 million mobility challenge right here in the state of Michigan. It's gonna help lead the world and it's about creating opportunities. How do we use mobility to create a whole bunch of pilots over the next year or so to help people that are seniors, people with disabilities, people that are veterans get access to the world they're challenged to get today and how can we make that better and easier by using mobility? Isn't that awesome to think we're not waiting. We're gonna start doing pilots even this year. That's leadership, folks. We also have to understand though, this will create some real problems in our society, in our world long term. Right now we actually need more truck drivers, more people providing goods and services. What happens in 50 years? They may not have a career. The question is, normally in America, we think too short term. We wait until we have a crisis and then we respond. Well, folks, in 50 years, that change is going to happen. It would be dumb for us to wait 50 years to do something about it. So we need to be thinking today about how do we help people in that profession, people going into that profession, how do they do lifelong learning? How do they make transitions? How do we responsibly support them as the world changes? and not wait for it to be a major crisis. So as we look to mobility and say it's gonna change things, it's gonna make people's, it's gonna save lives, tens of thousands of lives in our country. It's gonna create opportunities for people to have challenges. It's gonna help us with infrastructure. We also have to recognize it's not all good news. And let's do that with a passion about trying to help people understand the world's changing. And the last one comes back to trust. Trust is the biggest one in my view. My greatest concern for our nation is the lack of civility that we have today. How can you be the world's greatest country if you can't get along with yourself? It's not right, folks. And you can talk about institutions, and you heard that. Sandy gave us some really scary stats about trust in government, trust in media, trust in organizations, but I can tell you, don't think about just institutions. Trust is about you and me. It's a personal thing. And trust isn't just given. You know this, you have to earn trust. So what I would tell you there is, it shouldn't just be talking about trust. It's about finding ways to do something with someone together. It's about achieving some tangible outcome that makes a difference in their lives. Words don't cut it, folks. You do it by action. And you do it by doing action that makes someone else's lives better. And then you start earning their trust. And then you do it again. 
and you do it again, and you do it again. You do it with relentless positive action. That's what RPA is all about. I believe if I have a disagreement, if I have a different view than someone else, let's not talk about what we disagree on, let's talk about what we agree on. And let's go do that. Almost any issue you'll find you agree on, probably 50%, you may disagree on the other half, but do the 50 you agree on because I can guarantee you, you're gonna start earning trust and the next time you come back to that topic, you're gonna to be that much closer to doing that other 50. These are the things you can do over the next couple days, but more importantly, like I said, you heard, I don't like nice meetings, bring them back home, let's do them back home, but let's use this as a catalyst to say we can do great things together. So take these pillars, don't be content, don't be complacent, be excited about taking on the challenges of each one of those pillars because you're gonna make a difference in 10 million lives and make the world a better place. Have a great conference, thank you.